Hi again. What's called solid Earth is in fact not static, but undergoing changes in time and space. The Earth itself is spinning, and even this rotation is not constant, but underlies variations depending how the masses on our planet are moving. Nothing on the Earth is static. When we make measurements, it's often important we don't just carry out those measurements with high precision, but also know where and when we collect the data. Therefore, a non-changing static reference frame is often needed to locate where data was taken and unambiguously give evidence that the measured object or domain has or has not changed its location. Extragalactic objects can serve as sources for very long baseline interferometry, VLBI. These are so far away that we can assume them to be at rest. Therefore, they can serve as International Celestial Reference Frame, or ICRF, which basically is a list of radio sources with their astronomical coordinates. When observed from Earth, they appear to be fixed on the sky, and we can use them to relate the rotation of the Earth to those distant objects. However, for practical reasons, it's not possible to directly connect the celestial frame to a location on the Earth. Thus, we would prefer something more simple, like a 3D coordinate system, which has its origin in the center of the Earth and rotates along with it. Actually, such a solution exists, and it's called terrestrial reference frame. The tricky part of terrestrial reference frames is the fact that the Earth is constantly changing its shape and regions are undergoing changes on different timescales. So, for example, when the motion of the Earth's crust is observed, it must be referenced since we are carrying out measurements on the very same moving crust. This means a terrestrial reference frame must provide a set of coordinates that takes into account that they are moving. If we define the 3D coordinates of a location at some point in time, we can introduce a velocity vector to compute its position at any date we want. And that's actually what happens when we realize a terrestrial reference frame. We determine positions and velocities of various sites around the globe, but making use of all geodetic techniques available. Let's see how this can be applied in practice. Let's assume that we have a site from such a terrestrial reference frame and we know that it's moving 5 mm to the north every year. Unless there is any local effect, we can assume that the general area of that site or even a large portion of the tectonic plate on which this station is located will move 5 mm to the north every year. But how is this important? Well, for example, if we put a GPS sensor on a glacier and find out that the glacier is moving 15 mm to the south every year, we need to consider that the plate on which the glacier sits is actually moving 5 mm, 5 mm north every year. This means that the glacier moves actually 20 mm with respect to the crust. As long as we can relate our measurements to a moving frame, we will get the correct magnitude of changes on our planet. Terrestrial references are so important that the United Nations Committee of Experts on Global Geospatial Information Management has a special working group for global geodetic reference frames. There is an ever-growing demand for more precise positioning services, both for science and economic reasons. Actually, reference frames play an important role in daily life for all of us. Today, GNSS navigation is used in all forms of traffic. Keeping track of property boundaries is another example. Therefore, modern and precise space genetic instruments are important tools that provide the technological base for sustainable development of our society. I hope you liked this lecture. Thanks for watching and enjoy sensing planet Earth.